So, you know, I don't know what possesses me. Here he is, he's working perfectly. He comes along, he falls over on his back. I don't know why I can't just leave these damn things like they are. Um, for all intents and purposes, I'm finished here, but I couldn't help myself. I didn't like the way his bum was sticking up in the air like that. Uh, so I've gone back uh, into the armature, the main armature, um, uh, opened up the layer with the animated uh, bones in it, selected the hip bone, uh, and in the graph editor uh, isolated the Y location F curve. And just for the last little bit of the animation here, I've selected that that last... Uh, towards the end of the last keyframe and G and Y. I've just moved it on Y with uh, enough uh, proportional editing to just smooth that transition uh, on that little bit at the end of the F curve. And you can see he settles down. I've got to say, he does uh, settle down much better uh, onto the ground now, settling into the wrinkles of his jacket. We've got a little bit more poking through at the back. But here, look at this. We go back to the beginning. And, and scrub through, and bugger me, there's a, there's a great patch of white under his left arm there that appeared out of nowhere. So uh, for the life of me, I don't know where that's come from. It, uh, when I moved the, uh, the hip bone, I, you know, I don't know, I'm, I'm flummoxed. Before when we played through, uh, you, you could see that there was nothing there, but uh, it's taken exception to that. So here we have an opportunity, like I did with the tie, we have an opportunity to look at what's involved sometimes with just tweaking these animations. So I've gone into time lapse here just to get through this whole process. You don't need to see it step by step. Uh, but you can see, even though it's sped it up, I'm, I'm uh, selecting empties, moving them around, trying to get the... Uh, bones that are following them with IK constraints to in turn uh, shift out. Uh, I've sometimes adjusted the rotation of bones. Uh, I get almost completely done and then I go forward a few more frames and there's another little patch of uh, white under the arm here. Uh, there, look at that damn thing was driving me mad <laughs> for ages. This tiny little patch, I should have left the damn thing. It'll be easy enough to just stage this uh, this character in such a way that the camera would never see this particular thing. But, um, uh, you know, uh, you just you just get obsessive with these things sometimes. Um, here we go, move it right out. Uh, but it, it does illustrate the point. These empties are vertex parented to the mesh. So uh, here you go, that's all done now. Uh, I now come to the other side. You can see this problem under the right arm where the, the shoulder seam bones of the arm are to just get uh, uh, bent out of shape sometimes. So I'm just moving that right out. And uh, let's have a look here on the mesh. That's, look, that's tidied that up perfectly. So there was no problem with that. Uh, but now, again, being pedantic and mucking around, or well, to be honest, it had to be done. The, the, look over the shoulder here. These bones are sort of ballooning up and not just, they're not lying naturally against the uh, contours of the, of the shoulder. They are against the contours of the proxy rig, which is identical to the actual rig, so I'm not quite sure what, what, uh, What's going on here? But that's all cool. Here I am. I've gone into time lapse again, and I'm just tweaking all of these empties in such a way that the jacket now fits. Uh, if I don't, if I don't <laughs> select the proxy body, the jacket sits snugly against the upper chest and the shoulders uh, of of my actual rig. Again, I've moved all of the empties onto or shift. Uh, selected a, another layer for all the empties so I can isolate them without the clutter of all the other stuff like the proxy jacket uh, being in the way. And uh, it's a matter of just moving these in. There you go, look at that. It just uh, uh, now fits perfectly against the body. And I reached this point at the end where the, only, the last little thing was a, this little patch of white around the midriff. 
here uh, and it's again just a matter of finding that empty uh, and uh, in this case it's sort of slipped up past the end of the bone that has the IK pointing to it so just, just slide the, the empty down uh, it's still parented to the uh, proxy jacket mesh so as that moves so will the empty but from a position just a little further down uh, again this little bit here just to move the collar away from the uh, tie at that position or did I actually leave it because it's only there for one frame or something uh, and play it through a few times so that's finally all good I think uh, at the end I I, um, I I didn't have to do all this but uh, you know how it is uh, uh, so here's my final animation and I'm finally exporting it out to MDD so file export MDD uh, navigate to the folder where I keep these things name it banana slip uh, that's my uh, the name of the uh, the action uh, and export that out MDD is a point cache file format what it does is store the animation data of all the vertices of the mesh so uh, now we've done that we've, we've exported out the um, the animation data of this mesh on this separate layer I have a copy exact copy of that mesh there you go we man dot double o one here is we man uh, so it's an exact copy of the uh, my original mesh as it happens all my characters in the scene are the same character so I've got a crowd of these wee salary men uh, going off to work, shuffling off to work. Uh, here you can see the, the copied mesh has got no vertex groups. I've cleared all those off. All the shape keys are off. Uh, there are no modifiers on it. The, the armature modifier has been removed. You've, you've just got a mesh there now. Uh, so back in the modifiers panel, we're going to add a mesh cache modifier and navigate using MDD files navigate to that MDD file we just exported out banana slip dot MDD accept that and there you go there's the opening uh, pose of our character uh, um, slightly offset remember we, we offset the animation by 20 frames to settle into the opening pose uh, and those are the frames we exported out so frame number one of the exported animation is back on the middle of the uh, grid floor there so here we are here we are at the beginning the real beginning of the animation walks forward and slips so there's no armature involved here it's just purely the mesh animated by an MDD file it's much smaller in size and much less complex and much easier for Blender to handle uh, you can have a whole crowd of these things uh, uh, using far less resources than if they are all uh, animated by armatures and, and uh, keyframes and so forth. So uh, that's cool. So uh, there he is uh, on his own little layer doing his thing. Uh, all that's left now is to just tidy up the mess. So uh, here's my original character. Uh, there's no. Um, actually, I need the. <laughs> don't I? Go to the animation bones layer, select or remove that uh, the, that uh, action strip off the armature. Same for the proxy rig. Um, the mesh itself is back in its uh, its rest pose. Remove the shape keys off that, uh, and of course the uh, cloth sim free all banks, reset those uh, meshes back to their uh, rest position, there you go, the jacket on my character has just settled back to its rest position, go into the modifiers panel, turn off the eye and the camera on both of these uh, proxy meshes with the cloth sim applied, so that frees up the resources of Blender, uh, there you go, nothing on the uh, either of the armatures but alone on its little layer is the uh, uh, character walking along. Okay next is the final episode we'll 
combine two BVHs into one.